So first of all, we're just going to think about um, what sort of situations you'd be wanting to take uh, samples, so either fine needle aspirates or, or core tissue biopsies. Um, there are going to be several situations you're going, to be, you're going to be trying to get these samples. Probably the most commonly that, that will be used in practice is if you've got lumps and bumps um, on the skin surface. Obviously for those you're not going to need ultrasound uh, guidance unless they're very large and you're concerned about what's, uh, you know, what's inside those lumps. More, uh, more commonly we're going to be talking about masses within organs, uh, within body cavities. Um, and or diffuse organ disease, so diffuse uh, disease of the parenchyma uh, of various organs and particularly the abdominal organs. We're also going to be thinking about trying to sample uh, free fluid that's built up in body cavities. So for example if we've got uh, ascites or if we've got a uh, pericardial effusion or a pleural effusion uh, and, and indeed any other uh, fluid within those, within those cavities. Uh, we might be wanting to uh, take fluid from a uh, structure within uh, the parenchyma of an organ. So for example, we might be wanting to drain a cyst um, or, or sample uh, a fluid-filled structure to check whether or not it's sterile or, or whether we're dealing with an abscess or a hematoma. Um, and we might also be wanting to take fluid from uh, uh, something like a bladder, so uh, a cystocentesis sample with ultrasound guidance, just really to make the, the procedure a little bit more accurate and a little bit safer. Um, and what we're going to do with those samples is we're going to be thinking about sending those either for cytology uh, or culture, possibly culture and sensitivity, um, and, and histopathology um, and potentially biochemistry tests as well. Um, we'll need to just think about the equipment we're going to be using. So obviously we need for uh, ultrasound guided processes, we're going to need an ultrasound machine and then we're also going to need a probe as well. So typically um, with, the, with the probe we're wanting to be getting something like this, so a microconvex probe. Uh, the, the plus side to this is that we've got a small footprint and it also enables us when we're coming uh, into the uh, tissue from the side with our needle, we can get nice and close up to the uh, probe and we'll almost immediately be having our needle coming into the ultrasound uh, beam so that the needle will be appearing on the screen and we can come in at a reasonable angle which means that we can uh, aim for, for tissues which are perhaps a little bit deeper uh, within whatever it is that we're trying to get a sample from. Uh, the alternative is to use a, a linear transducer, the problem with that is we've got a flat horizontal surface and we have to come in at a much shallower angle which just makes a life a little bit trickier um, and means that we can't, we can't get so deep down. So if we've got a, a structure that's quite deep within the tissue, we'd be struggling. Microconvex probes also tend to be reasonably high frequency um, and for taking these samples we want really to be trying to get the, the frequency as high as we can. It's quite important um, to get the structure you're going to be sampling onto the screen, onto the image first, optimise the settings of your machine to get the best image you can, and again ensuring that the frequency is as high as possible while still enabling you to see deep enough to see the thing you want to sample. Um, and then also making sure that the focal position is at the level of whatever it is you're going to sample as well. So that when we're sticking the needle into the tissue we're, we're trying to, uh, to get some of, um, you're going to have the best possible image quality. So machine uh, and transducer. Um, you're also going to have to have something to get sample with. So in terms of fine needle aspirates, uh, obviously we're going to need a needle. Um, Probably the, the gauge and length of choice would be a 22 gauge inch and a half needle, that would be the sort of standard. Uh, there's nothing to stop you using a, a, a thinner needle or indeed a, a wider bore needle as well. Probably if you're going to be using a wider bore needle that's going to be if you're going to be draining fluid from a cavity um, and I guess if you're going to have a lower, uh, lower gauge, sorry a higher gauge needle, so a narrower needle, it's probably if you're going to be aiming for more vascular structures. Um, there's some argument as well for uh, using a narrower gauge needle if you're going to try and go into a, what you suspect might be an abscess just so that if you uh, put the needle into the uh, infected tissue there's less chance of that infected material leaking back out into, into, uh, into the body cavity. If you've got something that's really very deep into the, into the tissue uh, then you can uh, use a much longer needle so spine, spinal needles can be quite useful they go up to three and a half inches um, and they also have the benefit of having a stilet down the middle to stop material sort of leaking back out uh, as you take the needle out. If you're going to be doing a core tissue biopsy, 
you'll need some kind of biopsy needle. Uh, typically they're of the true cut style, either fully automatic or, or semi-automatic. Um, whichever you use is going to be dependent on what, you, what you've got available. But the most important thing to bear in mind is just get used to whichever one you use so that you know how it works uh, and you're confident with using it before you use it in the patient. Um, obviously these are often sold as single use um, but the plastic ones can usually be gas sterilised so that they can be reused and if you've got an old one that's been used before, hang on to it, you can use it to practice with as and when, you, as and when you're going to carry out the procedure. Whether or not you take a fine needle aspirate or, or a core tissue biopsy will depend slightly on your own personal experience, what you're, what you're used to, what you're comfortable with um, and the tissue you're sampling. But the general rule of thumb will be take a fine needle aspirate first. If that's non-diagnostic then you can proceed on taking a core tissue biopsy uh, for a sort of second go. Other things you're going to need, uh, you're going to have slides uh, to make sure that you can put your sample straight onto a slide with minimal delay. Uh, and there's evidence that, that that improves the diagnostic quality of the sample. Uh, you'll need a pen to write on those slides to make sure they're well labelled. Alcohol and cotton wool just to make sure that um, for a fine needle aspirate your site is, is nice and clean and sterile. Uh, gloves, just they don't need to be sterile for a fine needle aspirate. If you're taking a core tissue biopsy then the whole procedure really ought to be carried out um, in a sort of sterile environment. Um, and also syringes. Ideally we try to avoid uh, suction technique to start with now, so just a stab procedure, um, but you will need syringes there uh, to blast the sample out onto the slide um, and if, if you're not getting anything uh, from just a stab sample then you'll need the, the syringe to apply suction as well.